This Jagmaster is going for a big time revamp. Uh, I'm just taking it apart right now. Uh, sort of got started and I thought, you know what, this, this, this might make a kind of a cool video. So the, uh, the Squire Jagmaster here is, well, it's basically the body of a Jazzmaster with two humbuckers and it has a very strat-like bridge um, with, uh, you know, the springy thingies underneath. Uh, it has a lot of sentimental value to the owner. So what's happening is I'm going to refret it. And once that's done, I'm going to set it up and all that. But while I'm refretting the neck, the body is going to go away and get resprayed. So this is going to be quite interesting. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh boy, oh boy. Yes, we've got some damage on the inside there to the to the selector switch. No big deal. That's all replaceable. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna take it apart and I'm gonna get it ready to go. Um, I don't think I'll be able to film any of the magical finishing process, but you know, at the very least, you'll get to see the before and an after. And uh, here's a really great before shot. So we've got kind of uh, like a metallic black. I think he's going for a metallic charcoal is what they're calling it uh, from a paint supplier. And that's kind of gonna be it. He wants it refinished. There are scrapes and dings all over it. So, uh, there's a gentleman in, uh, in, in around Newton Arts called uh, Stevie, and if you look him up on Facebook, uh, Spray My Guitar by Stevie. He's the guy, he is the man that's going to finish this. So all I'm going to do is uh, take it apart at the moment, get it ready, so that just the body itself is going to be transported to Stevie, and then we're going to take it from there. So I will bid you adieu. So here we are, um, 33 seconds later. Uh, sorry it took so long. The guitar is uh, in its, um, well, I wouldn't say constituent elements, but uh, the guitar is kind of apart. So I gave the bridge a good cleaning. You can see under there it's nice and shiny. Um, this stuff here is going to need a wee bit of a clean. But uh, the priority right now was to get the body. Uh, so this is now officially just a hunk of wood. There is no hardware anywhere on it to be found. So Stevie's going to do his thing. Um, I'm going to do my thing with the neck. Now I took the tuners off just to give it a bit of a clean because it was, it's going to be a bit grubby. Oh, I missed the string trees, so I'll take those off. And give that a little bit of a clean. The rest of it is pretty good. You can see all the other bits all laid out nicely so that when it's reassembly happens, there's no gnashing of teeth, no pulling of hair. Now that's a little nicer. You can see it is a wee bit scratched up still. I don't think I'm going to get rid of that. But the actual sort of dort, the, the disgusting dort, is off of it. So it won't look as out of place on a freshly finished body, which is over there. So yeah. And here we are approximately, oh, I don't know, about... Uh, 48 seconds later, just totally whipped through this real quick. I cleaned up the headstock a little bit. I put the string, tr took the string trees off, put them back on again, because they're so titchy tiny, you don't want to lose them. Um, I'm going to leave the tuners off until uh, after I refret it, just in case I need to take the nut off and I can get my leveling bar like, whoa, all the way over like that. But uh, that's tiny details, you don't care about that. Uh, the scratch plate, the electronics have all been uh, pretty much rewired. Here's the new selector switch. I put in a new jack socket because when I put this new selector switch in, the, um, the screw or the, the nut was so shiny, I thought, no, I may as well have something shiny on this end too. Uh, cleaned up the knobs a little bit. Um, got a toothbrush in there, got a lot of the dust out of the um, ridges, grooves. 
And here is the back side rewired as you might expect. Um, this gray stuff here is shielded cable. It wasn't shielded before, it had single wires, so I just added that. I thought that's nice to do that. And uh, yeah, a pair of Seymour's in here in case you haven't already noticed. So, uh, you know, I think possibly we're going, although we've already gone beyond the stock Squire Jag Master, but again, uh, it's not really about, um, you know, pound, dollar, euro value. It really is a sentimental piece. So we're treating it with care and caution and love and all that. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is strip the neck and uh, get it ready for refretting. And another stage complete. This one took me about 18 seconds. It's really easy. Um, let's see, what do we have? We have a 10 inch radius neck. Uh, the fret slots are nice and deep. I like to see that, no fuss. You can take a, uh, rather you can skim a layer off the top with a radius uh, sanding thingy to make it all nice and smooth. And you can put in little tiny chamfers on each slot so the new fret wire sits nice and snug to the fingerboard. It's all good and nice. Here are the old frets. Whoops. Some of them were mangled. Uh, some of them were easier to get out. The, uh, the problem with that being some of them were just so uh, flat, there wasn't a whole lot left of them for the tool to grab onto to get out. But got out, we did. And uh, I'm going to press pause on this job for a while because I've just had to order fret wire. I don't have it in. I'm going with Sintoms 230140. That is 2.3 millimeters wide and 1.4 millimeters tall. And it is uh, this material is going to be 25% nickel as opposed to 18%. So apparently that makes them a little bit harder which is nice. But um, yeah, so I'm just gonna have to wait a while for that and we will press pause. Behold the neck in its freshly fretted form. You can see the fret ends are all poking out nice and sharp to cut you. You'll see that the fingerboard is stained with super glue accelerant. Uh, yeah, it took me about 93 seconds to complete the rest of this, so yeah. It's gonna be really cool. I'm really looking forward to, to to really like you know playing it again. Oh my God! It's back! It's back! It's back! Here's the body, and then I'm gonna estimate it's gonna take me about 15 seconds to get everything back together. Okay, go. Shazam! It is all done. Yeah, as predicted. Just 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 knock together real quick because I'm a fucking savant. Um, what can I say about this Jag Master? It's a Squire, of course, you'll know. And uh, it's probably not worth a ton of money, but the owner decided it had a lot of sentimental value, and that is absolutely fine and good. This morning, I just tidied up a little few little things. I didn't like the way I left the fret ends. Uh, you might notice if you look in really deep that the tangs aren't exactly visible. I think they were originally, but I opted for the, um, you know, to pretend there was binding there basically. So I cut the tangs back a little bit and there were holes left in those slots. And I filled them in this morning with a wee bit of rosewood dust and some lacquer. And I'm really glad I did that. And I also just tidied up the ends because they weren't sharp. They weren't. They weren't really rough, but they, you know, with frets that are pronounced like this, you either have a big uh, angle across there to make it, see, you know, to make the uh, make that the wanking portion of, of playing guitar nice and smooth. Um, uh, but I like to also have a little bit of, uh, of of clearance to the edge there, so I decided on a fairly steep angle. And now, when you look at it, really, there's quite a lot of room from the uh, the E string to the edge of the fretboard, which in some way is kind of this guitar's, uh, I won't say downfall, but it is a, uh, it's a thing with the playing action. I mean, it's a good refret, you know, I have to say, but what I was noticing today while playing it was that, you know, there's something kind of uncomfortable about it. And I think it, it just is this, the distance, uh, the string spread, if you will. Now I'm limited 
by, you know, by the distance, by the string spread of the saddles here. Um, and, you know, if I had cut an entirely new nut, I would have maybe, you know, lifted the string out to around there. Um, but at the moment, you know, you still, you get to down here and then that distance is uh, determined by the saddle spread over here. So overall, I mean, the guitar, it plays really well, but it's going to take a little bit of getting used to just because of that, uh, I'm not going to call it a design flaw, but a design decision by Fender to do the sp or not by Fender, by Squire to do their uh, to do their thing. So that's me being really, really fussy. So in review, let's let's sort of take a, a bit of an idea, take a bit of a gander at what we did through the magic of uh, the verbal recap. The machine heads, we stripped off, everything came off the guitar, all the hardware, every last little screw, every last strap button. The body was sent to to Stevie out at Avalon. But, uh, you can find him on Facebook if you just do the Spray My Guitar by Stevie search, you'll find him. He did a lovely job on the body, I'm afraid to touch it. The, uh, the scratch plate in comparison actually looks pretty dinged up compared to the body, but over time, a few little scratches here and there will just make the thing look like it's comfortable in its own skin. Put a new jack socket in there, clean the controls, put in a new selector switch, tidied up the bridge saddles and all that. Just gave the uh, under the hood a bit of a uh, going over. Refretted, as you probably remember, this morning, I'm really glad I, I gave the nut a bit of a polish because it wasn't looking that nice. And same again, the fret ends and uh, put in a little bit of the uh, rosewood dust with some lacquer. And it feels so much smoother. A little, uh, little humpy, like I say, with these tall frets, but you know, that's kind of cool. So overall, I'm really pleased with the result on this guitar. And uh, I bid you adieu and thank you for watching.